Dear Cecile, I thought we start with your beginning of uh, manipulated single cadres and the film strip. And I've read you started with cutting through the image and then illuminated, illuminating it again or with a different cadre. And so could you tell us how you started your experiments uh, in attacking the original film material and how it developed over the years uh, of your art production? Uh, I, I did start it on a Super 8 film when I was a student. And uh, I guess uh, just like every people we use film for the first time, you need to manipulate the film. And so I was uh, very interesting in just playing with the material, like just punching it and uh, doing things to it you know, with my fingers instead of in the cameras. So I try everything I could with any kind of tools I have under my hands, like, uh, like I was uh, learning painting at the time. So I have like a paint, paint knife for and, and, um, tools or cleaning tools. So I just experiment with a uh, clear with, with uh, Clorox, you know, to, to, to bleach the films with, um, with a needle to punch it, uh, with, and with the scissors, you just cut different ways that you shouldn't do because you know when you are doing filmmaking, they say we don't do that, we don't do that, and instead I just I try to everything you don't know do first. Mm -hmm. so it was just a play to play with the film with the material, mm -hmm. and then by accident one day I just I was thinking of using a bleach and I use another kind of product like for cleaning. Uh, cleaning the windows and it was a ammonia base and oh. and it didn't bleach the things just the thing was the, it, it, the same but then I, I used a scrape I, I wanted to scrape I use this thing you know and uh, it, and I could remove the thing the, the emulsion on top of it and and then it all started by this thing at the beginning it was just a very little piece and then more and more, I just learn to do it you know, full length. Mm -hmm. And then I have to dry it. But at the beginning, I didn't know I have to dry it because it was wet. So uh, recently, I, I, I discovered that my first thing that I made with using this technique, I've complete, completely vanished. They don't exist anymore because I didn't dry the surface. I just tape it with a tape. Yeah. So now it's all gone. And nothing, <laughs> no more original from the film. This is overeating film. Yeah. It doesn't exist anymore. And then uh, later I, I discovered another technique with the, with the tape, with the um, splicing tape that I recover the, the film. Mm -hmm. And then just yeah, I, when I unsplice um, a splice, <laughs> a piece of emission come with it. Yes. I, I saw the red. Yeah, you know, a piece of red came out and and the, and the stage just a yellow and green one. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then I, I reuse this this uh, discovery, like uh, to make my film, my future film. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, your earliest uh, film in this program is Overeating from 1984. Yeah. It looks like if you had crinkled the yeah. celluloid like a piece of paper or so yeah. and that's my question did you really do so or 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 is it another effect no, that, that's what i did because when i when i just just <laughs> remove when i remove the, the emulsion all the pictures came so but it was bigger than the original one because the, the chemical make it burst bursting so it was bigger so I have to push it back inside the frame to, to stick it again on the on the surface that oh. always only looked like crumpled and I, I just did it voluntarily to imitate the 
the face of the man who was eating something and just doing that with his mouth. Okay. So just push it back inside, like you say, crumple. <laughs> but it was wet paper, like uh, like a clothes. Yes. Okay. I see. Wow. And uh, this is also another question because for overeating, especially, I think it's quite. Then you used also a loop, you know, so it's always uh, coming the same succession of, of images, more or less. So it's really um, combined with the content, you know, I would say, you yeah. know. But uh, sometimes I think it's not even so necessary, you know, sometimes yes. So. A general question would be, how do you collect your material, you know, how do you decide, okay, now I take this piece of a reel and try to transform it, you know, is it because you like it or because it's so beautiful or because it makes you angry or what, what, what? What is it? Or is it sometimes only accidentally? I, I, I guess I, I didn't look for all this material. I have, I have them, people gave it to me. So it wasn't a special, uh, I wasn't looking for them. So I, I have a lot of them. So sometimes when I decide to start a film, I just look at every piece of, of film that I have and then select them according to similarities sometimes. Like in cruises, I oh. use all the things going on the sea, and well, so I I I choose I choose things, and according according to the things that I have, you know, I don't decide first. It's just come after looking at it. Of okay. the, and at the beginning, a lot of people were giving me things. Uh, so now it's a different because people keep them for themselves <laughs> because they use uh, so fun footage now more and more. But at, at, at 30 years ago, people were using, using, using less. Yeah. And uh, do you use also different formats or do you, because at the end it's always 16 millimeter? Yeah, I, I, um, I, I, I glue everything on the 16 millimeter because it's easier and cheaper to make a, a print from it. But to, to glue it on the, on, on the base, on the 16 millimeter base, I, I can use super eight, 35, nine millimeters, any kind of thing that I have. And I can um, remove from, the, from, its, from its base, original base. Of course, of course, okay, okay. And uh, you yourself uh, described your method of working uh, with the film strip uh, with two phases, you know, so phase one and phase two. Maybe you could repeat it for the Vienna audience, your phases of, of working for a film. I mean, you, you mean uh, the, the step? Yes. The step? Yes. But first, as I told you, I just search the films at the beginning and just just use a film and just unroll it in front of my eyes and yes. just choose every piece. And sometimes I don't really see what's inside because I never project the, the 16 before making a film. Really? Even when I'm doing it, editing it without looking at it. At the beginning, when everything is edited, I just start <laughs> to look at, at it. Okay. So it's like in the, got the blind things I'm doing. Sometimes, but I was a myop, I have a myopic thing, so it was easy for me to look very close. Now it's a little yeah. bit difficult. Then after that, I I decide if in which in which way I can remove the emulsion. It depends on the films. Some films are very easy with the tape, and yeah. some are different, are more difficult, and you use I use ammonia. Okay, but, and that's what I call the humid things. Sometimes it's in a water base and sometimes it's dry, the dry way. Okay. The dry way is the easiest thing, is the easiest way to do because I have like onion skin later and I like can do with the tape, I can do anything I want. I can cut it with scissors very easily. Yeah. 
but there is no more acetate behind it. Yeah. Paper. Yeah. That's why they, I'm saying that I'm a collage, I'm <laughs> doing film, collage on film, I'm not a filmmaker really, because I don't really use a camera. Yeah, but you are not a filmmaker, but you work with film. Yeah. Um, sometimes I've also the feeling that uh, you want to create a, a equivalent for our own chaos of memory or also our own chaos in dreams. So, uh, but also for the transients of it. So, what would you comment on such an interpretation? Um, I, I guess it's come from the different, um, since I have different, uh, the, 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 the image come from different places and films, so they, they, they can come from documentary or, or movie or, so it make like a, it's like I, I like to see the same subject from different angles, different yeah. point of view from, uh, so, and to make something with it. At the very beginning, I didn't want to make a story, like for me, films shouldn't be linked with the story, make the storytelling. And then, uh, unconsciously, uh, when I make my film, there is a storyline, like a big, not really a storyline, like a beginning and the middle and the end, and like uh, something going from, from point A to going to yeah. the end of the film. I don't know if you understand what oh, I mean. Yeah, of course, collage or... Like making little stories. Yeah. Uh, in, in Cruises and La Peche Miraculeuse, but also in The Last Lost Shot, you used also touristic images, yeah. I would say, and made out of these I guess quite simple movies, very complex uh, compositions. So uh, does something special interest you on tourist films or is it also because they are in your collection? Yeah, they were in my collection. I mean, at the time I have a lot of home movie and, very, and yeah. a lot of home movies are is the people when they go in vacation, they just film themselves. So doing a tourist film. Yeah. Um, and they have uh, this big uh, documentary about the cruises. So that that was, it was a very big film. So <laughs> I have a lot of image. And another one, more or less, this was for the Seychelles government. And it was about also uh, tourist and uh, e economy and industry, but there was a both, yes. both things. So I have these two big, with. So I make the Pesh Miraculous with one and the other one the closest things. Yeah. Uh, and I did discover late, later that uh, in the cruises it was the France, the old uh, the ship it was a French ship who, who, came, who became like a Norwegian one. So I was using a, a ship, it's a, the old one was named as a France. Oh. <laughs> so it's it funny for me to learn that later that I use a film about the France. I've read that you also used films made by your father. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, so has it then something, uh, a, of course, different because it was uh, probably it it were images of your family or of travels of your father or no not all of them but uh, my father sent me like uh, the films that uh, were not there that you just like uh, or very uh, not very good film like on the exports film and thing like that of films that about uh, the military because he was in the military and he shot a lot of parade, things like that. So things that was on about the family especially. So yeah. this film I use a lot in my, my own work. The family film, I didn't use them too much. A little, some pieces. Oh yeah. Underexposed generally. 
Yeah. Okay. And uh, all the other part, family part are not my family. There are a lot of people from uh, everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I, that I got, the film that I got here from, from um, a lab who gave me a lot of super hit films from people who make DVDs and then they don't, we came, uh, took back the, the super hit. They left it in the lab and the lab gave it to me. Yeah. So, I use this film. So, uh, so another uh, a simple question must be very time consuming to, to, to make a film like you do, you know, uh, so uh, how can I imagine how long do you work on one film, although you have finished so many, so. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's time consuming, but it's not, it's not as much as uh, animation thing. I don't do like image by image. I do like by like segments. So it, yeah, it's easier. That's true. But, but, but you have to, to work on single caterers and with taping and, and, yeah. and I don't know. So I think it's, it's, it's similar like animation, maybe not really only you don't draw, yes, but different things. You yeah, know? It's, like, I, for me, it's easier than that because I think I would I wouldn't be able to do animation image by image. It's too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. It's even maybe more, but I'm not so sure. It depends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the Japan series is all is also one of my favorite films. Such a beautiful film, and uh, I, I would like to know first how do you get these wonderful colors? You know, I think they are really unique in in. in but film. this is the colors of the film itself. Yeah, yeah, you don't add anything. It's just like uh, the film was shot a very beautiful day in Paris, so there was a lot of of uh, shots with white arch architecture and a blue sky yes. first. And then uh, the, the film was uh, from the 60s, 70s, I guess. And it was very easily, uh, I, I could very easily remove the, the different layers, the red, and I, and on, and I get the, from, from one side there was a green and the other side there was a red. And if I scrape the green one, I could, uh, get back to the yellow one. Okay. So I remove the, the, the cyan, the, the blue one, and thought there was a red. And so I, I just make like paint, like a blue and, and yellow, like a green. And, uh, so I mix like, as I was a painter, I mix uh, colors. Yeah. And since I overlay, overlay the things, it's not like um, you do like uh, in, when you're doing the camera, everything are getting whiter here because we are adding, it's the colors are getting deeper. Yeah. So it's like, it's more or less like painting. <laughs> so how many layers are sometimes? Just two, just two layers. Two okay. layers. But okay. if I scratch <laughs> this one, I have three layers. Okay. okay. I can say I can sometimes three layers, but physically two layers. But yes. if I scrape one, I no, no, you know, I can get, <laughs> I don't know if you understand. Yeah, so I guess it's the... That's right, yes, because I thought sometimes there are more layers, of course, the colors, and then there is another, like, uh, like a superimposition, but I know it is not the superimposition, so I, I thought this is a different layer, and yeah. Sometimes it's get very, it gets very deep, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, sometimes uh, I thought also maybe you added some sound for this film, but maybe it's only the original sound. It's because the original I, sound. It's only original? I, I, yeah, it's the original sound. I just cut it in half because, uh, and I just, I don't know if I put it in the right order. I just, just use one half of it, of the oh. sound that was with the image. It was a separate sound. I know, I know, okay. Because I thought I hear a woman in pain sometimes, but maybe that's, that's from the dancers. Yeah, I think it's from the dancers. Okay. 
Uh, and there, your your uh, last film is also the longest film. It's it's Chris World, and the the, the length is very unusual for you. Although it's only fifteen minutes, but mostly you have films under ten minutes or ten minutes, and so why the do you decide to make it that long, especially? Is it because of this, I would call it wild mix, mixture of different uh, sources, like, uh, I don't know, maybe documentaries and different amateur materials? I think I have a lot of materials of super hit film from these uh, people that I got from the lab. So there was a lot of traveling there. And uh, yeah. just because I have a lot of them. <laughs> I think sometimes yeah. I just stop a film when I don't have anything left. <laughs> so I'm not really choosing the, the length of the film. Sometimes I just I don't have anything more. <laughs> oh, okay. I see. And this one, I have a lot of, of things to work with. Have you, because uh, I think uh, many steps of your work, of your, I would call it plastic work or fine art work, is, uh, is also an experiment, you know, it's not sure if it will really work out for you at, at the end, I guess, you know, so do you have to throw away many, many parts of the film strips, you know, with the chemical experiment? Yeah. Sometimes I, I, I lose a lot of parts, especially when uh, on the humid, when I use uh, your water and the bleach, it's yes. difficult to control what I, so I just use the things that still are, well, which are still interesting to use. Cool. Sometimes there's no more, nothing left. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes there is, so it's very a lot of hazard, you know, I, 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 I play with chance. Yes. Yes, privacy. Yes, you, you really that that's that's unbelievable. So, so my last question would be: Are there any role models, maybe in experimental filmmaking, but also maybe from the fine art scene, or any influences you would you would like to tell us? I think, the, I mean, I, I, I'm sure I have been influenced by Stan Brakhage because it, it, I saw his film very early in my, my, my film making. Yes. It was yes. the first film that they show us. So I've been influenced in the sense that when I, I look at his film, I say, oh, I can do anything I want with him. There is no rules. That's what he means for me. That's so okay. I didn't understand whom did you mention? And breakage. And breakage, yes, yes. Because I, I saw all, in my school they, they had a, they had all these films, the super eight films. Yeah. And they, every time they were showing us all these things. Yes. So it, I, I guess he influenced me. Yes. <laughs> Even if I don't want to, but yeah, I think he, I, get, I was influenced by him. Bruce Connor too, I, I like it a lot. I saw a lot of Bruce, Bruce Connor. And uh, in the painting, I like Rosenberg and all the um, people working with the image. Pop art. Yeah, pop art. I love, I love oh, pop art. And, um, and especially Rosenberg and also um, the, what do you call it? The Schwitters. Okay, yeah. That's all the, all the thing. Dada, Dada is, you know, yeah. It's like, I, I like the thing. he made, oh, yes. I guess was what I was influenced by. No, no, it was, yes, it was uh, perfectly. But I'm only uh, surprised about Rauschenberg. But why not? Because I think that the 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 the, the usage of color is also sometimes uh, very strong in your films. Maybe this is the the I don't know. Maybe. Uh, a wide uh, a similarity, you know, which is not a close uh, mm -hmm. companionship, but maybe a wide one. I use also to, to say that I was influenced by the, what they call the new realist in France. Yes. Where like the people were just um, 
uh, removing the, the hats in the ching, no, not Chingle, uh, no, I don't, I don't remember his name. I know. You know just it's taking up the publicity from the street. It's maybe if Klein, no? No, not if Klein's. Um, his friends. Yeah. Uh, I also forget the name. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't remember. I don't know. You know just. Or do, yeah. In French, it's Villegle. Just uh, use like um, lacerated uh, advertisement in the street. Yes. 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 But yeah. I, I don't. <laughs> sorry for my English. <laughs> I think it's no problem. And I as say thank you very much for this interview. Yeah. Yes. And I hope we have another chance to, to see you really in person.